Can you please talk about ketogenic diets in ApoE four? Let's say let's say you're like homozygous uh, two copies of the of the E four. Is there something? Do you think that there's something there as far as a ketogenic diet and whether that might be beneficial, harmful, or benign somewhere in between? Yeah, well, uh, I get that question a lot. Dale Bredesen has done a, a, quite a bit of work in this area and, and sort of influenced my thinking on the area too. Um, what I've observed is that people who are ApoE4 positive, actually one example would be Dr. Mary Newport's husband, Steve, and uh, he had Alzheimer's disease. She wrote a book uh, on using ketones as a therapy for Alzheimer's disease. Um, theoretically, based on some of the clinical data, he should not be as responsive to therapeutic ketosis, but he obviously was. I knew him well, actually, when he was alive and uh, and seen him, seen uh, Mary get significantly more time with him because of staying in a state of therapeutic ketosis. Um, so my thoughts on in regards to ApoE4 is, um, I have a lot of thoughts, it's kind of hard to sum up, but the main things that I think you really want to focus on if you're ApoE4 uh, positive, or if you have both copies especially, is to manage glucose and insulin. It's probably the most yeah. important thing. Uh, hemoglobin A1C is a really good indicator. You should be tracking that. Your triglycerides, maybe the most important, you know, besides insulin is also uh, your level of systemic inflammation. And I like to use high sensitivity C-reactive protein. So all those things, you know, you want to be as low as possible. Glucose, hemoglobin A1C, triglycerides, insulin, uh, HSCRP. Uh, the other one is blood pressure. So high blood pressure definitely correlates with, with poor outcomes if you're a POE4. Uh, so... You know, so you want to track those things. Yeah, it sounds like you're going your, down the line of all the, the symptoms of metabolic syndrome. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty yeah. much. And, you know, when it comes to the ketogenic diet, and I guess people have a concern about LDL, if that skyrockets, you know, in your APOE4, because there is some legitimate data looking at hypercholesterolemia and, and, and APOE4. Um, I, I, I think it's a good idea to limit saturated fat, especially if your LDL skyrockets. Uh, I know a few people have communicated with me that their levels got very, very high. And um, and it may be good for them to even take a low dose of a statin. I'm, I'm talking about like a half a pill, like, or one pill per week. So a half of a pill, maybe two times per week, like on Monday, Thursday, if, if it gets super high. And I've just seen it skyrocket really high in some people. So a higher protein, moderate fat, low carb diet may be preferred over a ketogenic diet for some people, uh, with the fat source coming from more skewed toward monounsaturated fat. So it's probably not a good idea to like, some days I get more than 200 <laughs> grams of saturated fat. That, that's probably not the best idea for someone, um, APOE4, uh, sleep, Exercise, of course, are super important, but maybe sleep is more important for people who have this uh, because, you know, it's preventing amyloid accumulation. And we know that the lymphatic system helps to sort of clear out some of the toxins and amyloid accumulation, you know, as we age. So really focus on, on sleep and exercise too. But in regards to diet, I would cautiously, I'd be a little bit cautious about using a exceptionally high ketogenic diet, but I think a low carbohydrate diet, there's no reason not to consider that. But I think there's some considerations with a ketogenic diet.